that's, that's the uh, enough of that. How are we all? It's very bright that light up there, isn't it? Hello, everybody. How are we all today? Just refresh this so we know where we are. Sound is off. There we are. So, how is everyone? How's your week going so far? What's up? What's up, JD? What's up, man? Ah, oh, Linda, see, you're definitely not a police officer because you've had another hello to that. You just said hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Warm night, warm night. So, I'm very good, thanks everyone. It's been a um, been an eventful week, really, so far. Um, been out doing a lot of bits and bobs, building, uh, had some meetings, um, which have all been good. Very exciting stuff ahead, and uh, and I'm I'm very looking forward to. Um, yeah, very exciting. Hello, Northern Ireland. How are you in Northern Ireland? Ireland's one of my favourite places in the world. Absolutely love it. Uh, Northern Ireland, especially. I just absolutely love Northern Ireland. I love the people you've got. You know, you're such great people. You are uh, been through so much, and yet you know you're so friendly and. I love you all. Love you all. Love you all. Oh, we got uh, Arkansas, USA. Uh, it's been crazy all week, but how about you uh, from uh, Arkansas? Yeah, do you know what? It really has been a... a um, it's just been a great week. I mean, I, I've got lots of stuff I need to do, <laughs> stuff I haven't done. And I'm cutting a hole in the side of the shed uh, outside um, because uh, we want to put some doors on it. It used to be a stable for the horses, and we want to turn it into like a summer house because it goes, it looks over where the lake is. So I've decided to cut a hole in the side of it and stick some doors on. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, show you my latest acquisition. Now, for those of you that, that know me, know I, I'm, I've got a few, uh, loves in my life and um obviously my gorgeous beautiful wonderful wife um is the love of my life and obviously my family and my friends um uh, hello charlotte from the west midlands um but the, and obviously criminology I, I collect a lot of um, crime ephemera and uh, so I, I i i study criminology and um but also um Anything to do with ships, um, uh, the, uh, maritime antiques, and and all that. And the, the reason being, my family goes way back, and it's 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 a it's a it's a naval family. It's a it's a family of of, of seafarers, and going back to um, yeah, my my great 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 the uh, little granddad was on Nelson's ship. My uh, uh, another one of my my. Family members went down with the Lusitania when it was um, uh, sank by um, uh, a German submarine in 1915. So I collect this stuff. And anyway, I saw this wonderful little <laughs> brass. Hang on. See, look, hang on. Let me, let me, let me give you the full. Right, I'll give you the full explanation here. Now, one of the uh, uh, um, ships I'm interested in is um, uh, the HMS Eridice, which sank uh, in 18, uh, 1878, March 24th. I'm looking down here because I couldn't remember the date. Um, uh, off the Isle of Wight. And it, um, it sank in a storm and out of all of the, um, I think 300, let me get this right, 319 crew uh, died on it, and there were only two survivors. That's very sad. And these are the two survivors. This is the Eridice here, uh, sort of depicted in its, in its sinking state. And these are the two guys that survived. Uh, they're the only two guys that survived the, the sinking. Anyway, um, because this, the, the, the ship, it sunk, but the masts were still out, uh, at the top of the water because it wasn't in that deep water it was just terrestrial um, storms 
So um, what they did was they, they managed a few days later to refloat it and they, they took a lot of the wood off and they made things out of them. And these are the type of things they made, which were little treen books. I don't know if you see those, there's engraving on them as well. And these are what the, 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 the um, people did. So I've collected some of these. And I'm putting them in a display because obviously they're they're just absolutely fantastic to think that that was on the, that was these are made from the deck of that ship where sailors, yeah, you know, over what, hundred over 142 years ago, they 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 tramp up well and and way before then because that's when it sank 142 years ago. So you you kind of think that's remarkable, remarkable history, and it's it's lasted all this long. And um, so anyway, I put them in a display, and I'm looking for things just to go around the display so I, I kind of came across this on on eBay it's, it's, it's brass and it looked really nice because it'll go somewhere in the display because I've never seen anything like it before and it's I'm guessing it's just supposed to be a paperweight but the funny thing about it was was the guy that or, was guy or girl the, the person was selling it and she got a guy shows a little bit about greed really they had it a starting bid of five pounds worth the brass alone is worth more than five pounds. So, you know, I put a bid in um, and it said, you know, you, you can put a um, uh, best offer price. So, and you know how it goes on eBay, you put a best offer and somebody else comes up with a double double of it and then you go half and you meet somewhere in the middle. So I, I put in a bid, I can't remember what it was, about 10 pounds, thinking that he was gonna come back with, oh, I want 30 and you come out and deal about 20. Anyway, he just came back with a, and it really annoys me on eBay when people do it. They just go, no, that was it. Not a counter offer, nothing, no. Anyway, so I carried on looking at it and thought no one was watching it. And it only had a few hours before it went. Anyway, so I just stuck £5.50 on it and I actually won it for a fiver. So his greed lost him five quid. But anyway, I've got it. I'm not knocking the person because, you know, they just obviously thought I was going to go more. But if they'd only just come back with, I want 30 we would have dealt with the middle and they'd have got a lot more for it, but how fantastic is that? Just great. See, easily pleased me. Anyway, back to tonight. How are we all? Hi, uh, Yvette Mary from, uh, yeah, I'll say hello to Yvette Mary. Yvette is actually outside. At this present moment, um, watering the plants. Uh, oh, hang on, uh, blessed one. Hi, Carl, please, please, please. Three, three pleases, three. Not just one, not just two, but three. Short of four. Um, please give us a hi to Steve from Grantham, uh, Lincolnshire. Uh, uh, he thinks you won't read this out. Well, and he's driving me madder. Well, Steve from Grantham, I am reading it out, and it's to you. Hello, mate, how are you? Uh, now, if you come back to Little Island, you should go to this, the City Hall Belfast. They have some of the actual items retrieved from the Titanic. And it's free. Oh, I'll have to go there. Uh, JD, thanks, mate. That's, uh, it's, um, I'm trying to get some, some more artifacts from um, uh, the Lusitania. There's, I know there's, there's, there's a guy who's got some that he brought up. Um, and it's just because it's close to me. I, I, yeah, they're, they're, when you, a family member went down on it, you just think the horror that must have been and at the time. It was a cowardly attack, a cowardly attack from a, a war vessel to a, a, a passenger liner. Um, and they, they, they say that eventually brought the, the, um, the Americans back into World War I. Uh, although they did take the time because it was quite a bit later than, than that. It was, um, and I don't think it was that, I think it was other things. I just think that, um, yeah, America and Britain, we're, we're brothers and sisters. And uh, yeah, we, we, we should, no matter what happens, we should always look after each other. Um, I really do, because Let's face it, the rest of the world is, is going to depart sometimes. And we, we need to cut through each other. And we did. We have done. I went to the Titanic Museum for probably... We went, oh, we did. We, <laughs> that's Jenny's on board. Say hello to Jenny. Um, we did. We um, And what a fantastic place it was to see where they actually built the Titanic. This huge sort of dry dock. Just, ah, oh, it's just mind-blowing. And to think what happened from there. But... You see, the Lusitania was exactly the same shape as the Titanic, and so was uh, they had the Olympic, the Aquitania, and the um, uh, Maritania. Uh, no, the Maritania. Yeah, the Maritania. Um, now the uh, 
the Olympic is the uh, the only passenger ship in history to ever sink a submarine in war wartime, and it um, uh, and the Britannic, the Britannic, of course, it was exactly the same. And again, that hit a mine. Um, I'd love to dive that, but you're not allowed to because it's near Greece, and the Greek government won't let you dive on it anymore. Uh, and it's sad because you've got so much great stuff in there that could be taken from the wreck and preserved, um, and they won't. Um, Ah, Lynn, thank you. Uh, good. I'm glad the Americans feel the same way because we, we, we love you guys. Um, and um, uh, so the, the uh, Olympic, the HMS Olympic, that was, um, it, it saw the, 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 f um, the periscope of a, um, of a submarine. And so it, it actually, so brave, it went towards where it thought it would be and actually hit it. And sank the the, the the German submarine, the U-boat, which was which was great. And it was a passenger liner to do that. And then you had the Meritania, which was oh, hang on, what's happened, Tom? Hmm? Oh, sorry, Mrs. Beatty's just walked in the door and she didn't look very happy. Are you okay? Well, I'm peed off. Oh, oh, Mrs. Beatty's peed off. Right, anyone? Mrs. Beatty is peed off. I need anyone to stop what they're doing. Put your cups of tea down. Mrs. Beatty's peed off. Why? Because. Oh dear, what's going on? Good evening, everybody. This is Mrs. Beatty, if anyone's this not seen her before. It's fungus clear, right? I've noticed some brown spots on the roses, right? She says the roses, she means minge. No, I didn't. Sorry, that. that's about loud enough. Our roses that we spent money on has got fungus on it, right? Mm. So, anyway, I've got this and it doesn't, I can't get it to work. What, won't, won't spray? No. <laughs> it's not uh, working. Is it, a is it just a turny? It's yeah. You must just turn it. How's that? Just put it on my hand. Don't want it near the dogs. Is it me? You've broken it now! Are you sure you should not turned it round? Uh, and you've you're broken to turn... it now, haven't you? Whatever you've done. Oh. Do you want to... Leave it. What about super glue? Leave it. Oh. Did you crack on? I can, I can fix that. I'm, no, you can't. Leave it. I've got a ship steering wheel. This is for Maxine. Hello, handsome. Oh, bless you. It's our wedding anniversary today. Could you tell Kev well done for putting up with Hey, no. Do you know what, Maxine? Kevin is a very lucky man. I absolutely love you to death, lovely Maxine. You are a great pal, uh, a great friend, and you're always so and up. Maxine? Maxine. It's their wedding anniversary. No and Kev's. You mean Maxine, Maxine? Maxine, yeah. Maxine, Maxine. Oh, Maxine. Thank you so much for my book. Yeah, thank you so much for a book. I Congratulations on your anniversary, darling. And he's a very lucky man to have you. A very lucky man. Uh, Mr. Gunner, I'm in the doghouse again. I'm always in the doghouse. I spend more time in the doghouse than the dogs. Oh, have you not fixed it yet? Oh, now it won't come off. Would you want me to help fix it? No. Well, you've done enough damage as it is. I just think you're twisting it. You just no, didn't twist it the right way. It. If you twisted it the other way, it worked. Well, it's too I think it's down to you. You actually took the whole thing off. I didn't. <laughs> right. Oh, Pauline, my daughter is cracking up because you're in trouble. Thanks, Pauline. Thank you to your daughter as well for your support. Is it working? Yeah, I've got it to work. How do you get it to work? Who needs men? Well, a bit harsh. Right. Um, Teresa. Hello, Carl and Yvette. Can you show me yourself, please? I have uh, not seen you for ages. If she's nipped off outside. She's nipped off outside. 
in a huff of spray, antifungal spray. Do something with our roses. Anyway, yeah. So that's the uh, that's the Olympia, and the Mauritania um, did a uh, an equally brave thing when they they were fired upon, um, and they were fired upon by two uh, torpedoes uh, from a, a U-boat, and obviously. A torpedo, a lot of people don't need this, know this. If you do know this, I apologise. But a torpedo needs a flat edge or, or a, a, an edge for it to ignite, for it to actually uh, explode. If it hits something sideways, it can bounce off. So it needs a, it needs a, a head on. And so what the, the Mauritania did, it saw the, the German U-boat getting into position and realised what was going to happen. So you just think how brave this is. I mean, the, you know, full of passengers... It turned to face the U-boat and it went toward the U-boat. So when the U-boat stuck out two um, uh, missiles, torpedoes, they came straight off. And as you can imagine, the, the, the front of the boat is, is, is sort of this. And the torpedoes came and bounced off either side and went. I mean, that captain deserves that. All these captains deserve... Um, I deserve medals. I don't know if they got them, but if they didn't, they deserve them. You get the Carl Beatty medal anyway, uh, whatever that's worth, and it's, uh, it's a cushion. Um, but I know, sadly, the uh, captain of the Lusitania was kind of hounded, uh, and it's quite sad because he was, seemed to be hounded by um, one of my absolute heroes, and it, 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 it's a... Uh, because uh, he was hounded by uh, Winston Churchill, sadly. Um, and I think there was a point that they wanted somebody to blame, so they tried to blame the um, the captain. And it was not the captain's fault, it was the Germans' fault. The, the Germans... And before anyone comes up with, no, it wasn't the Germans, it was the Nazis. No, Nazis were the... This whole thing about we weren't at war with the Germans, we were at war with the Nazis. No, we declared war on Germany. The Nazis were the political party that was in charge of Germany at the time. As of, at that point... It was the Conservatives that were in charge of, of, um, of Britain. So when you, it's just like, if you're going to go down it was the Nazis, you just got to say oh, it was the Conservatives against the Nazis. It wasn't. It was Great Britain against Germany. So it was the Germans that did it. Um, and, um, and it was a very cowardly thing, the, 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 the U-boats on fine, if they're going to be doing stuff on... Uh, um, uh, doing stuff on... Um, yeah, uh, military ships because that's part of war as horrible as it is um but to do it on sh uh, passenger ships where you're killing innocent children and they're uh, just horrible um also yeah glenn's glenn's uh, mentioned the um uh, the the new uh podcast is out uh, it's our 50th podcast 50th podcast and and it was great to uh, i think uh, everyone all, all, who was there uh, as Yvette myself glenn we phoned the mums. Um, they had a chat. We we even had Reg in, which was nice because we haven't seen Reg for a while, and he was in. Um, Doctor Tarpley, Miss um, just Mister School is uh, uh, they they phoned in, but I think they're undercover somewhere, so they had stuff. But yeah, um, JD only cows attack something defenceless. Absolutely my point as well. Uh, good, good on you. Um, as lots of people said, happy um, happy um, anniversary to you. Um, uh, Maxine, and where can we find the podcast? If you just type in Anytime Podcast um, or Yvette and Glenn's podcast uh, into your search engine, it should come up. And um, and it's uh, it was I mean Reg did um, did a phone reading, and he was very accurate. I'll give him his due. He he, I was outside with Diddy at the time because he had a bad foot, and um, the short one of his legs is, is, is the foot sometimes gets swells, and uh, he's had a new boot fitted. And so uh, it, it, it takes a bit of time for the leather to, to work around. Um, yeah, if um, Justine, yes, he, 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 the scoundrel of Reg Corker is very well. He's, uh, he's very much out there. Um, and of those who, you, who don't know who Reg is, just nip off to um, uh, and listen to the Anytime podcast. Um, it's Yvette and Glenn's at their, at, well, I was going to say their best, but they're both at the best 24 7, really. It's a lot of fun. Um, Laurie, yes, I still have my Reg Corker t-shirt. I actually wore it the other day when I went out. Um, I love my Reg Corker t-shirt. Uh, I mean, the, th the sad thing about the, 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 the podcast is it does deserve awards. And I'm not saying it just because I'm a part of it, but 
it, it's it's because it's Yvette and Glenn's baby. It just came from let's let's have some fun, and it's it's where radio should be having fun because radio is so bloody boring these days, absolutely boring as crap. There's, there's no one says what they want. They're all it's all corporate entities, so it's all just a bit of chat, safe chat, then going into a bit of music and a bit of news, a bit of weather, then back to safe chat, a bit of music, a bit of news, a bit of weather, safe chat, and a bit of it's just horror. It's just mind-numbingly boring across everything and that's because all these local radio stations are getting bought up by the big corporations and it is just absolute crap i've not listened to a good show in fact the last decent show i listened to was glenn hunt's show with yvette on it um at real radio and that's going back a number of years now at least three or four years and it was funny absolutely hilarious they they both just brilliant. I mean, you imagine Glenn hosting a radio show with, with Yvette on it. What what could not be funny about that? Uh, I'll watch it tomorrow. I have to um, I have to ration on Glenn, otherwise I get overheated. Oh, hello. I think we've got someone who likes Glenn. Everyone loves Glenn. He's a lovely man. A very lovely man. I voted for the podcast this year. How have they got on? I, I don't know how we got on, uh, Dawn. I, I imagine that we didn't, we didn't win, otherwise we'd been told by now, I thought. But... It's one of those things that it's like most haunted, you know, when you think, you know, we, we've been passed over by, by BAFTA so many times and it's wrong because you think, you look at what wins things like the BAFTAs and what BAFTA's supposed to stand for. And this is a British show that against all odds, yeah, um, we were told no by everyone. We proved broadcasters wrong. We, we, we are the epitome of what British producing is, film or television. And... We, um, yeah, we ploughed on with no money. Uh, we put everything we had into it. We we kept pushing even when everyone told us no, pop told us no, told us no. And we made it work. We saved a channel from going under, Living TV. We created a genre that is now a worldwide genre. And this is from a small British production company. And it's probably because we're in the north as well. They don't like it in, in, if you're outside the M25. Um, and you think we've created hundreds of thousands of jobs around the world. The amount of, of, of locations we've helped just by being on them, uh, just by putting them on TV and, um, and creating more footfall for them. The hotels, especially with the lives, when you had hundreds and hundreds of people turning up, you had a whole team of uh, camera operators and uh, TV techs there. Hundreds of them, 130 people it used to do to, take, to do a live. All the hotels were, were full. And now, with all of the ghost hunting companies each weekend, because of Most Haunted, um, they they go each weekend, people come and see them. Again, hotels are paid, um, and all this is paid. And yet, BAFTA still don't think that is worthy of, of any kind of recognition. And that is a disgrace as far as that's concerned. In my opinion, it, it's... it's it, because it's not seen as a serious genre. And at the end of the day, you, shouldn't, you should look at a genre from what it's done. And that is a small, tiny production company against all odds, fought against everyone. And it has been a fight. You know, we fought with Living TV constantly. And you will never know the full truth of, of, of the, the, the stuff that we, we had to uh, go through uh, with them. Um, but, you know, BAFTA. You should, you, should, you should email them. Tell them. Get on to BAFTA. Give us an award. BAFTA's the... What is BAFTA? It's a British. What is it? It's the. It's the British Association of Film and Television Awards. That's it. British Association of Film Television Awards. I mean, one of the reasons we didn't win BAFTAs for a while was we 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 were we were putting up. We I think one of the channels put us up for a while, but one of the people who hated us because they turned us down, uh, uh, and said it wouldn't work and were proved wrong was actually on the on the on the panel. That's all you need to know, doesn't it? Anyway. Laura Gamble! Uh, sending you, uh, Annie, the biggest virtual hug. Missing Ghost Hunting so much and love you both. And we love you, Laura. We love you, Laura. Both Yvette and I love you, Laura. And we love James too, but James knows that because he knows everything. Everything in the world. Oh, thanks very much, Angela. I use it, 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 it's the show that deserves it. It's not, yeah, and, and it does because it's done so much. When you think, if we hadn't continued when everyone said no, there wouldn't be ghost hunts, hunting shows like there is. None of the American shows would exist. 
because we created it. One tiny little production company in the arse end of, um, of the north um, created that. Anyway, is what's the milk drinking. Um, well, the trouble is when that you hear that slurping noise, you don't know whether it's Yvette walking or it's uh, Watson drinking. I'm just getting a dirty look. It must have been Watson drinking. I'm getting a look. Did you did your fungal spray work? Are oh, you walking? You're walking, right? So it must have done. Oh, thanks, Laura. That's really kind. BASTA, British Association for the Supernatural Television Awards. Wow. Oh, bless you, Will. <laughs> Will's just um, just tweeted BAFTA and telling him how great Most Haunted is. Oh, thanks very much, Will. Will. Wow, Will. No, Will McAllister. Yvette's just walking past, look. Oh no, she's not, she's stopped in there. Oh no, she's walking past. Oh no. Hello. It's my wife. People. Yvette Fielding. I've just been Off spraying the, the roses. The roses. You've been spraying the roses? I have. Constantly, do you know what? Constantly rubbing me down. No, it's just being affectionate. And no, it's, it's nice. I've got psoriasis, and the trouble is, if I'm not careful, I end up with more skin on my top than yeah, I do. Yeah, if you don't have a lovely, look, gorgeous wife. I've well, got a bit I'm psoriasis about there. I've got a bit of psoriasis there. Where? Uh, there. Yeah. Oh, God, that's not. Yay. Right. Unmumsy musings, what's this? Um, most Haunted were respectful. Oh, were respectful and struggle staying on TV. Yeah, ghost adventures, disrespect locations and stay on TV. Uh, they trashed the ancient ram in. Pfft, yeah. The BAFTA after party is lit. <laughs> oh, James. Most Haunted, uh, Yvette Carla, Most Haunted experience. Are multiple winners of several years of... Higgy Pop Awards. Yeah, do you know what we were thinking this year of, 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 of sort of stepping away from the Higgy Pop Awards? We're not on TV, so we, we can't go for a TV award. And um, I'd be nice to get, let somebody else win, I guess. Um, hi from Jersey, from Rebecca. Hello, Rebecca from Jersey. Do you watch any other shows on YouTube? No, do you know what? I, I, don't, I, I don't have that much time, unfortunately. Um, I used to watch I used um, to oh hang on how did that just come on anyway the sound on that just came on how weird is that wow um, maybe it's because I itch my bottom no fungal suppose it might help then good night everybody see that going off to bed night Gorge I'll be up in a minute I'll let you rub my feet later if you like no, Justine and Jordan, I still think. Uh, sorry. We've got a daughter for that. Right. Love you, <laughs> love you doll. Uh, I still think you need a, an official most haunted book. Yeah. Do you know what? We we are looking at doing an official most haunted book. Um, uh, so hopefully, yeah, soon. Uh, what was I? I can't remember what I was saying then. Probably not that interesting. Not much of what I say is very interesting, to be fair. Oh. It's a nice, um, what is it, latte, latte. Love from Burton on Trent. Love your show. Thank you, Sandra. It's very kind. Um, yeah, Dish of the Dirt book. Well, you know, never say never. Uh, that'll be a book that everyone would love to read. And the funny thing is, is that, that most of the villains aren't the ones you've seen on screen, although some of those people were pretty appalling, but... Um, and disrespectful, but uh, a lot of the villains are the ones behind the scenes. Love from Buxton. Love from Derby. Derby and Buxton. So I love the live we did in Derby. We had a huge tent, and I think we had two aeroplanes in the tent uh, with the audience, which is absolutely fun. 
Um, just brilliant, loved it. I remember the boss after just seeing the uh, uh, after seeing the way it was all set up, just came running over to us and just said, "I want another one. I want another one." Um, you see, his face was very horseish, and he just came up and went, "I want another one. Give me another live. I want one in six weeks' time." So we did. I can't remember what the second one was, but they were great. A lot of fun. A lot of fun those lives. Hello from Bristol. Bristol's lovely. How is Bristol? Because you've had a lot of shenanigans over there, haven't you? Which of Angela's cakes is my favourite? I've never been asked that. Um, the ones she sends home with Yvette, then I don't have to be in the same room as her. That's my favourite cake. No, um, I think my favourite cake... I don't know, she does so many. The trouble is with Angie is, is, is she... She cooks these cakes and she'll was, she was say, oh, I've only done a, um, uh, I've just done a, I don't know, um, a sponge cake with a bit of cream on it and a Victoria sponge. And you go, oh, that's fine. I think that's going to be a bit poor. And then it comes in with something else. You go, yeah, but put apple in it or I'll put a cherry on the top. It's something she does. She does brilliant. She She's never made a, a crap cake. I tell her she does, obviously, because that's, that's what I'm supposed to do. I have to do that sort of thing. But she hasn't ever made a crap cake. She's brilliant. Don't tell her I said that though, because if she starts thinking, oh, I care, then we're at the bloody end of it. Uh, do you actually want to go back? This is cat. Do you want to go back on TV because everything seems to be doing nicely on YouTube, on Facebook, no hassles? Well, do you know what? We we yeah we 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 toyed with it. We we are in talks. Um, there's you know other things happening that, that potentially will will do a bit of both um i think it's the the, the tv things gives you a, a more of a platform still i know tv's dying out um and a lot of it is because um you know people who run broadcasters um a broadcasting corporations now really don't know what they're doing and they're all confused um and so television is losing viewing figures and it's all going on the internet um but i think um We'll see. Um, I mean, we're going to carry on with uh, with the YouTube thing. We've got more episodes coming up. Uh, we've got more extras coming up. And tomorrow night, if you are... Now, Jenny's on here, so she's going to be able to tell you the exact place to go, I hope. But uh, Stuart and I are going to be doing a Facebook Live uh, from Shrewsbury Prison. But it's going to be early. It's only going to be for a, a, an hour. Um, or an hour and a bit to so join us before we've got an event tomorrow night so we're going to go there from uh, 7.30 to um, to about 8.30 quarter to nine uh, and then obviously the event will start um, I mean we may even go right up to, to nine um, but it'll be on you uh, on Facebook now Jenny oh there you go Jenny's bunged it up there um, I hope you enjoy it <laughs> Because it's the first time Stuart and I have done one of these on, on Facebook. We normally do them on YouTube. But we're trying to do different platforms because a lot of people are saying they can get on one, can't get on the other. So I think if we can cover as many platforms as we possibly can, then everyone has an opportunity of seeing something. Um, so uh, so hopefully we, we can um, you'll enjoy that tomorrow night because it's Stuart and I. We've got four cameras. We've got three locked off cameras and one which Stuart and I are going to use to roam. We're going to mainly be put around Sea Wing um, because um, Sea Wing is going to be. Um, we've had a lot of stuff there. The last couple of times we've been there, we've had stuff in A Wing, but Sea Wing's been very active. And uh, so hopefully we're going to get there and um, get some stuff for you. Uh, it'll be nice. And we've got the execution room as well as the. the, the, the uh, condemned cell as well as the cells and as well as where you know cause it used to be a woman's prison at, um, in the 1800s so it's a great place uh you carl you should try vanilla lattes they're yum hold on one second <laughs> hold on hold on hold on you mean vanilla latte Yes, I do love vanilla lattes. I got them today, actually. Great minds think alike. <sighs> greetings, greetings from Vienna. 
very th th theoretical question. Mr Beattie, if the Earth explodes and we all die, will we all fly around in space forever as ghosts? Good question. The thing is, how will we know? Because no one will be there to view us and see whether we're ghosts or not. Here's a thought. It's that if a tree falls over in a wood and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? Just throw it out there. Right, Dawn Butcher. Carl, how was, uh, how was uh, Rick found? Uh, how has Rick found the most wanted experience? He used to be really sensitive by surroundings in the early years. Do you know what, Dawn? Rick, um, he, in the early days when he started, before he went off to America, he, um, he was very sensitive, very scared. And if you remember, him, myself and Stuart used to get on, uh, used to go off and do a lot of stuff on our own. And, and it, was, it was a lot of fun. He was quite, he was scared, but they get on we all. Um, but at least he gave it a go. Um, but now he's come back. Uh, we, I've got an extra with with, with him in um, uh, at Accrington. Uh, I sent him off into Accrington on his own, and it was a kind of a baptism of fire because we, you know, I, I kind of left him alone and we kind of locked him in and just went right. You're there. So he went off and did stuff, and he he lasted a fair while, but he did come out running because he said there was something banging, <laughs> banging. <laughs> And it's funny to see Rick because I've you know I've known him since he was what nineteen and here he is in his forties, and he's he's still as shit scared now as he was when he was nineteen. Um, so yeah, it, it, um, I, you, you'll enjoy that. And it's funny because it was in the daylight, but um, I sort of did say to him when he went in, I said make sure it's on night vision. So he kept the camera on night vision, but it's daylight. So it's daylight, night vision, and daylight, which is is um, you know, uh, Kelsey. Um, he was fab at, uh, at Accrington. A lot of things happened uh, down under though. Do you know what? He, he's um, he enjoyed. He loved his first experience because obviously he's not he's not experienced you guys before. And and you know you guys are fantastic because you make the experience. You know we just set it up, but you guys make the experience absolutely fantastic. Um, right. Uh, let's put that one on. Um, right. Unmumsy musings. Josephine. Um, if you were to have a psychic medium from anywhere in the world on your show, who would you pick and why? I would pick the one psychic medium that could give me an accurate reading. That's about it. I, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't, my, my problem is I wouldn't really want another psychic on. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure whether we've ever had any. I say with the exception of Brian Shepard, Brian Shepard proved himself to certainly have something. But with the others, they for, certainly to me, they never proved anything apart from the fact that they could get information from the walls or from their mobile phones. Um, and I think, um, and I think we, we, we get more without them. We've got so much more without psychics. And when you think of when, when we started Most Haunted and we put a psychic on, we, we kind of did more for TV psychics than anyone else in the world because suddenly it was tv psychic everything you know and then i think when we started to realize that they weren't all they said they were that kind of filtered down and that's why you don't see as many on tv anymore and they're so easily found out now and i always think it's strange that the, with the more um the more technology there is uh, you know with with google um and uh, and anything and are there more psychics? <laughs> I mean, you can, you can easily get anyone's information in seconds, you know, absolute seconds on, on, on Google. It's just, um, anyway, that's why really. Uh, right, Joanne Homewood. Um, can't wait to go on a most haunted experience. Uh, one day when I get home from, uh, get home to the UK, whereabouts are you? It's one day when I get home to the UK. Miss my daughter's 30th birthday. Most sort of reminds me of home. Oh, bless you. So are you, are you, are you abroad because of this, all the lockdowns and the restrictions? I suppose you must be. Uh, this is Shannon. I like Brian. He was a psychic. Uh, he was the psychic you had when you, when I started watching uh, some of the older without being, without being bad. 
I wasn't blown away with. I wasn't blown away where I was probably comfortable with. The thing is, you've got to remember that the, the, the thing with Brian is is that you know, he wasn't. A lot of people said he was too wooden, and he, he. You think, what do you want? Do you want a showman who is who is going to be fake and and make things up and and look good, and but be fake, or do you want someone who's a bit awkward on camera and be real? And it's a, I used to ask people, and they said, oh, your Brian's a bit, a bit awkward. They, well, of course he is. He's not a television personality. He's a psychic. He's someone who draws things, and, you know, for my opinion, bloody accurately. Um, but, you know, he's... Yeah, Brian's still practising, but he does it in, you know, on his own time. He's, he's not like the others. He's not, um, you know, he's not sort of... He's not one of these sort of... Uh, He's a, he, he cares about his family first. He, he's not after money, fame, or his e he hasn't got a huge ego. So, and he was great. I think he was, he was a, and a proper lovely man. You know, he's, out of all the other psychics, when they come on board, they all go, oh, please can I come on Most Haunted, please, 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 you'll be doing me a great favor because I'll get known, no one knows me yet. You put them on. And you know, as we did, we, we, we let them go. Uh, we never let a good psychic go. Um, but sometimes the channel wanted to get rid of them. Sometimes, you know, we found them to be fake and we got rid of them. But we always let them, with the exception of one, we always let them finish their series. So we gave them that respect and not one of them, with the exception of Brian. I mean, Brian went because of um, uh, his health issues, unfortunately. But, um, and he's the only one he's left and said, thank you so very much. I just, you know, he just said it's, um, it's a fantastic guy. Um, so he, he, he's... Uh, but the others just want to slag you off and it's stupid because all that does is stop them getting work because you know the first thing it's a stupid thing is that when anyone slags you off or who's left a show other producers see that and they won't have them on their shows because they don't want the same thing to happen to them and other times other producers call you up and say oh i understand you work with so and so what are they like and you tell them which is a silly thing to do and let's say we we've, we've never slagged anyone off we, we've not we've told the truth about people, but we've never, there are, I could finish people's career in, a, in showing just a couple of tapes that we've got. Because obviously as a, as a broadcaster, we had cameras everywhere and we caught people doing the most ridiculous things. And that's why we asked them to leave. But we never, ever put that out there. And we never would, because that's not what we're inter I'm interested in. Uh, would you try and get Darren Brown on your, your show? I'd be interested to see that. Um, do you know, we, 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 I know Darren Brown, and um, he's a lovely guy, a real lovely guy, and um, he, um, oh thanks Chloe, I, I think he's better off without mediums as well now. Um, I think the, uh, Darren Brown, he, we did talk about him coming on the show, but we didn't quite know where it would fit, um, so I kind of think it's, um, uh, you know, he always, he's always wished us well and he loved, he, he watches the show or used to watch the show, I'm not saying he still does, but he's a lovely guy. I'd love to have him on the show, but I don't know where he'd fit, to be fair. Better with just Glenn. Well, it is, you know, it, it's, um, I really go something in Norfolk area. Um, I hope so. Hello from Kentucky. Ah, I've hunted at, um, at Waverley, um, Bobby Mackey's Queen Mary and other places. But would love to come to England to hunt. Well, we just do you know what the, the thing is? The great thing is about it, we we I know people love to go to castles, and that's the first thing when people think of think, oh, let's go to an English castle or an English manor house. But I think from my experiences, although they're great and there's a lot there, you should visit them if you you, you come here because it's a part of the history. But for me, I'm getting so much at this moment. We're getting a load from prisons, you know, Shrewsbury, um, Gloucester. I mean, if, you, if anyone goes, you know, on this channel um, and looks at the, 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 the one we did, the, the extra we did in Gloucester, I mean, it was just terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Um, so I loved it. Yeah, yeah, those places are great if you ever do. I loved Slap Ham. Carl, when I can, uh, I claim the 200,000 from your last live stream. It's 250,000. See, that just proves, Paul, you're not psychic. <laughs> Sorry, mate. It's two hundred and fifty thousand. Oh no! Hang on. No, hang on, Paul. I got it wrong. Didn't we say it was two hundred grand because you didn't get it completely right? It's only I don't know. I think we did. It's uh, it's in a check. It's on its way. No, honest. Uh, Gloucester was amazing. It was. It was very amazing. 
We've got to remember, England is so ancient, uh, uh, in, a, in a way, had witches, uh, Romans, Vikings. Yeah, and before that. And I think that um, you've got to remember, I mean, this is the great thing about everywhere in the world. I know our, our borders are all borders now, but you have to go back. You know, hundreds of thousands of years ago, those borders weren't there. So we're, we're all the same people. Yeah, we, we might look different, but we're all the same people. Um, and that's a th why one of the whole reasons I'm just against any any kind of racism whatsoever. I don't care who it's from and who it's to or whatever excuses people are making up. You know, we're all the same people, for crying out loud. Um, and history is fantastic. And you see that. You, you think of us in Great Britain. We we're, were... I know we're an island now, but we didn't used to be. And we're an amalgamation of, of everyone else. It's like... We're, we're, you know, America and everything. We're, we're every, every country now is a, a mix of every other country, which is great, really. Yeah, I'll get off to that. Yes, it was. It was because of the, um, the 200,000, because of the, um, the promo. Uh, yeah, it's a check. It's already gone. I've sent it off to my own personal, personal raw mail delivery van. Hopefully it'll be there before we finish this. Edinburgh Vaults is great. That's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. As I love that channel. It's my 50th birthday next year, cat. Oh, I'm determined to get the most haunted experience. Wow, 50th birthday, well done. 50 years, ooh, half a century. Hello again, hello, John, how are you, my friend? Really good that, uh, to, to know you're on board tonight. Have you any activity now? Yeah, we did. Funnily enough, um, because we've sort of started looking at houses down in Cornwall again, we've started to get a lot more um, activity in the house. One, one, one morning we came down on all the cupboards and the, 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 the cupboard doors uh, and, yeah, down up, upper cupboards and down cupboards and all this kind of stuff and drawers were all open. Some is not happy. Uh... If you have to do more locations down south, I'll give you a ghost tour around South End. Oh, that, do you know, Chloe, I'll take you up on that. I mean, it'd be lovely to see you again anyway, because I haven't seen you in ages. Um, but we should do more down Southampton, because Southampton's great, especially because, obviously, you know, had the crap belt bombed out of it in the Second World War. And there's, there's so much history there, so much history. Uh, well, eventually, we are going to move to Cornwall. Um, we, we are definitely going to move there at one point. Uh, only purely because it, it feels a, but yeah, not for a while yet. Uh, we are mm -hmm. about to return to Stoke, uh, Stoke on Trent for investigation. Yeah, we, we are. I mean, our Reg does uh, a lot of stuff in Stoke. Uh, his worldwide tour is uh, is in Stoke. Anyway, um, yeah, well, Stoke's only down the road from us. All right, well, we do like Stoke. Young Bobby Bobby Williams was uh, from there, isn't he? Bob Williams. Natasha, right. Thanks, most haunted uh, official at Jenny for wishing me and my hubby uh, William a, a five-year wedding anniversary last Saturday. That's Natasha saying we didn't. And everyone who didn't wish Natasha and her husband a five-year wedding anniversary, be ashamed of yourselves. I'm ashamed of myself. Natasha, we are sorry. Happy five-year wedding anniversary. For last Saturday. Five years. What is five years? I don't know. Is it... Because what material is five years? Would, uh, uh, would you ever go back to Gloucester Prison? Yes, we are going back to Gloucester Prison soon, actually. The only problem is, is we're having trouble because they've, they've not got their... Uh, um, they've not got the, the COVID stuff sorted, so we can't... We, we can't go until that's, that's been done. I can't wait for this COVID stuff. I know no one else can. I can wait either for this COVID stuff to just finish and do one. Uh, uh, looking for work in the UK. It may be difficult being from the States. <laughs> do you know what? It's a lot easier for you guys to come and work over here than it is for us to come and work over there. So good luck to you, John. Um, and if you do make it, let us know. Because uh, I think there's an overdue pint there. Can't wait to meet uh, you and Stuart in October in Accrington Police Station Court. So that's uh, Rose Hall. 
Yeah, do you know what? I, I love, I absolutely love that place. I love it. What? Leicester has been extended. What, the lockdown, James? The lockdown's been extended again. God, what are you doing in Leicester? Are you just going around snogging each other? That's just ridiculous. The trouble is, there will be spikes. I mean, you don't get all those morons that went down in, in the middle of a, a, a pandemic, went and started standing next to each other, breathing and spitting on each other, whatever they were doing, uh, when they were doing the protests, right across, you know, not just here in the UK, but across America as well. Of course, there's going to, it's going to be um, spikes and there's, you're not going to get rid of it because of bloody selfish idiots like that. It's like all these people moaning about coming back from Spain and they have to spend two weeks in isolation. Stop being so bloody selfish and just do it. Crying out loud. You should have gone to Spain in the first place in this time. And if you're there, you should stay there until it's over. Uh, Patrick. Hey, Mr. BT. Hope you're well. Just finished off. Finished my ship. Shift of a new job. Oh, what, what are you doing now, Patrick? Uh, please, could you give a shout out for my wonderful wife, Claire? Yeah, here's a big shout out for Claire. Who's gorgeous? Who's gorgeous? And um, uh, and for you, mate. Uh, what is it? What are you doing now? Are you not driving anymore? Are you not driving anymore? Are you not going anymore? Uh, Argus is printing giant. Argus is stopping printing the giant catalog. Wow. See, world's all going to shit. Argos isn't printing their catalog anymore. I wonder if Kate Decay is still printing a catalog. Does anyone know if Kay still prints a catalog? Kay's catalog got many boys through puberty. <laughs> well, the bra section did anyway. Apparently. So people say. Okay, uh, are you doing another Most Haunted? Yes, we are. Uh, Carl, most haunting experience team come to um, uh, come to where I live uh, in uh, Anstey, uh, Leicestershire. We're not locked down like the city of Leicestershire and surrounding areas. Oh, so we, oh, but that's good. So we can come there. I always got the Argus catalog. I know it's just wrong. It's just wrong. It's just it's just. It's becoming a virtual. Do you know what? I actually think. It, do you think that that's what everyone wants? Is a virtual world, which I think is sad because, let's face it, people aren't very nice to each other now. But imagine what it'd be like if we we stop human contact or have less and less and less human contact. Um, I think it's sad that so many shops now won't accept cash, and I thought that was illegal because you know, the cash is a. I promise to pay the bearer, which means it's legal tender. And I didn't think they were allowed to not accept cash, but apparently they do. Well, Callum, mm, what about if I read some of it? Hmm? 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 Oh, sorry, I was up doing that. It must be really annoying. Uh, it's a new world order. Do you know, do you think it is? I've had a lot of stuff about it, and I mean, always in two minds of this, whether there is a group of people trying to um, rule the world. I don't know. I know everyone seems to think it's the, it's, it's the Masons, but it's not. I can tell you that now. We can't even agree on what uh, pudding we're going to have at the end of a, a meeting. So I don't think we could actually get together and organise a world. Or reorganise the world as it would be. Come to Liverpool again. Do you know what? You know, I never have to be asked twice to come to Liverpool. I love Liverpool. Absolutely love Liverpool. And and I, the Liverpudlians are just the nicest, nicest people in the world. Every time we've been there, it just has so much fun. Some shops still accept cash. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, that's why I said some shops don't. Um, they, they Most shops still accept cash, but some don't. And I kind of, it kind of bothers me a bit. Apparently the USA have a coin shortage. And there's speculation that the US banks are trying to create a cashless system so that they can monitor where and you spend your money and influence your choices. Do you know what, Linda? That's, that is the only reason that people want a cashless society. 
Um, and you think now, you, you um, yeah, you think now that there's a, um, uh, the, the, the problems that we've got now, um, even to a point where, I, and I guess it's when pe people are uh, committing crimes, yeah, that's fine, but they can also be used for people who are just near a crime scene because everything you do will be cashless, and if everything's cashless, they know exactly where we are because, you know, they can put trackers into credit card devices. Obviously, they're still in your phone. They can tell you where you are now just 24-7. Um, and that's, uh, if Masons ruled the world, dinner would be good. <laughs> that's from Anna. Yeah, it would be actually. I do do good meals. And speeches, because speeches go on and on and on and on. My husband, Mark Sibbs, loves you so much. Ah. Uh, he thinks you're funny and interesting. Please, can you say hello to him? Uh, he's watching with me right now. Mark Sims, do you know what, mate? I love you too. I do. I know you with Laura. I know you with Laura. But I love you too. Proper bro love. A bromance. I hate that fucking word. But anyway, um, thanks, mate. Loads of love and respect to you, my friend. Alistair Crowsley was a 33rd degree mason. Well, actually, he wasn't. He, um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fallacy. He, he gave himself a 33rd degree. He was in Freemasonry, but got thrown out. Uh, and then started his own, um, I'm going to do the inverted commas, I hate doing these, Masonic Lodge. But it wasn't recognised by the Grand Lodge of England. So it wasn't a Masonic Lodge, because anyone can set up a lodge if they want it, but it's, if it's not recognised by the Grand Lodge of England, it's just a group of blokes getting together. And that's where he started his magic, with a K stuff. Um, uh, but he got thrown out of Freemasonry because he was a bit of a lunatic. Or oh, certainly not a very nice person. I don't remember, if Masons have a certain set of... Um, uh, we sign up to a certain set of dictates, and, and I personally... Um, uh, I agree to them, and I will stick with them all the way. Hi. Oh, crying out loud. Is Mary's just stuck a wet head? <laughs> Your mum hasn't sprayed you with fungal stuff, has she? Uh, yeah, all, all right. what, what do you want? Can I squeeze past Oh, crying out loud, she's hardly dressed. I'm not, I've got a towel on. And PJs underneath here. You haven't got any PJs on here. You're soaking wet. I've got my shorts. You're soaking wet. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, everyone's saying hello to you, not that they care. Um, are they the ones with the funny handshake? Trust me, I've known lots of people who aren't Masons who have got funny handshakes. <laughs> there are a few little weird handshakes going on. But you should see when the goats come on. Man, that's weird. That's when it gets really funky. Funky, funky. Uh, my husband is head of Knights Templar of Durham. You're always welcome to visit him at uh, his normal lodge. I would love to, Victoria. I was thinking of joining uh, Knights Templar. <laughs> you just see the stray hand. Hello. Eh. Goodbye. Oh, God, go Bennett. <laughs> Goodbye. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. What, what are you doing? Oh, what am I doing? I'm making a cake. Okay. I'm being interrupted at this present moment. What, oh, what are you doing? You're talking about Queen Victoria. No, I just talked to, to someone called Victoria. God, oh, wow. People coming halfway through a conversation going, for it. It's like, I don't have much time on my own, but there's, there's, there's things I love to do, right? I love to do, right? I like to have an hour where I can watch two episodes of Mike and Molly, because I love Mike and Molly, um, which Channel 4 have taken off now. Halfway through a bloody series. Um, and King of Queens. Now, I've seen King of Queens about a thousand times. I absolutely love King of Queens. It's a, I just think it's I'm brilliant. Obsessed. So all I want one. is two of those episodes, which is about 50 minutes with a cup of coffee. This one will interrupt me and have nothing to say. No, I will. I'm saying, oh, I'm going to work now because you're usually you in the go, Papa, Papa, Papa. So no, I turn the TV off. I put my coffee on. What you go? Nothing. No, I don't. Nothing. That's what you do. Love you. Right, the amount of times that I've been halfway up the stairs you. 
<laughs> and then Clara over here will be like, Mary, Mary, seriously, come down. And I'll come all the way down the stairs, which is a lot of effort. And I will say, you're right, Pa. And you'll go, oh, nothing, didn't need anything. <laughs> So no. Anyway, have a nice night everybody. Continue talking about Queen Victoria. Bye. Right. Love you. Love you too. Yeah. Was uh, the Grand Lodge, um, was the Grand Lodge Great Queen Street, London. Oh, you said, yeah, it's, it's, it's Queen Street, uh, Great Queen Street, London. It's um, It's been used on a lot of TV shows. It's fantastic. If you ever get the opportunity to go and have a look at the Grand Lodge in Great Queen Street, you're allowed to go in and have a look. And there's a museum and stuff in there. It's absolutely remarkable, beautiful, fantastic building. Uh, what lodge am I with? Um, I'm with a couple. Um, uh, I've just resigned from one because I was with too many, really. Um, I was with Samaritan Lodge, not that far down the road from where I am, uh, but I, I quit that one. Um, uh, I was initiated in London at an Antio Lodge. I um, am now with Lodge of King Solomon's Temple and I am in um, St George's Chapter 2. What's the scariest thing you've experienced? Mother-in-law! No, um... Scariest thing? Do you know what? I, st I still think... The eeriest thing I've ever no, it was was the wheelchair at Standing Hall. It just I was just doing a shot from top to bottom, and this wheelchair just comes, and, and there's no one there. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think that was probably it. Carl, when is Mary coming back on Wednesday? Do you know, I don't know. Um, we're back to the Freemasons again. No, we're not back to the Freemasons again. We're just asking, or answering a question about the Freemasons. Work for DHL. Oh, DHL temporarily until I go back to the military. It's like ex soldiers, we struggle to adjust. Yeah, do you know what, Patrick? I, I'm, I'm with you, buddy. I'm with you. I always find it strange. A couple of friends of mine who are um, ex veterans or veterans, they come back out of the. Uh, about the army and, and, and yeah, these guys are trained to, to protect us and, you know, they're, they're trained to do things that we don't normally do in everyday life. And so. I kind of, you know, how can you expect someone who's who's been to war, who has been, you know, seen the most atrocious things and seen the, ugh, the, the most horrible things? Um, how would you expect them to adjust and do a normal job like the rest of us? It, you just can't. That's why they need help. Our veterans need so much help, and a lot more than they get. Um, I'm, I'm a huge supporter of the military because without them. Um, we wouldn't be sitting here having this chat um, and they allow us to do the mundane things that we always do every day uh, and every laugh, every joke, every moment of happiness that we have, we owe to them. Uh, we, we truly do. Throughout years, you know, these people give their lives for people they don't even know. Um, and they say it's for queen and country, but it's bigger than that. It's it's much bigger than that. And that's why we, we need... We need more. We need to look after them more. Um, we need to give them help. We need to give them support. We, you know, in my opinion, they should be given free housing. They should be given any job they choose. They should be just given a lot more help than they are. I, I really believe they should. Certainly never pay tax anymore. Anyway, that's just me. Investigate the beach of Normandy. Mm, can do. Ghost, Ghost Adventures of Cornwall. Here, here. How are you guys? Love Ghost Adventures of Cornwall. Great bunch of people. I've said that before and I'll say it again. Um, it's most haunted true. <laughs> of course it is. You've got to remember is we, we, we go under the guidelines of, of Ofcom. And uh, it's it's we, 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 we wouldn't be allowed to fake it. It's part of a contract with the channel. And so if anyone faked anything, one, we'd lose our license. The channel would potentially lose their license. The channel would sue us. Uh, there's so many different things you go. We, we're not allowed to do that. Whereas you've got to remember, on the American side, they don't have that. Uh, they don't have that those restrictions. And I wouldn't want to, if because you think if you start, where do you finish? 
But, you know, if you start faking stuff, if you start tying bits of string to door handles or whatever it is, you know, you do that once, you do that again, you, you, you can't, it's just, it's just wrong. And, yeah, I've, there is a space for that, fine, you know, do a drama um, and, you know, make it scary and you know, a, a drama series or a movie. But, um, you know, if you're going to do a paranormal investigation, just do it. That's why, you know, it never bothers me when... Um... <laughs> That's right, Kat. Absolutely right. Um, although I've never seen it, to be fair, but I've just heard. Um, and that's why, why, you know, it never bothers me when somebody says, oh, it's fake, because you just know it's not. It would bother me if it was, because you think, oh, God, we've been caught. We know, but somebody knows. But it's just not. And so, you know, we, we've... Uh, can a ghost haunt more than one place at a time? This is from, oh, lovely Ruth, lovely Ruth. It was lovely seeing you last weekend, darling. Really nice. Um, do you know what I don't know? But I wonder whether, because it's things like, you know, because um, what, Queen Mary is supposed to, um, or Mary Queen of Scots, I should say, is supposed to haunt about six different locations. Now, either she's kind of split up. She does one at a time. <laughs> Just fits them in to her schedule, a ghostly haunted schedule. She must have in a diary. Or there's, you know, is is it stone tape theory? Is some of it stone tape theory where you're just reviewing her, replaying what's happened to her? And it's not necessarily a spirit. It's just, do you know what I mean? It's just a difficult thing. Is it not supposed to be that whenever they... This is from JD, by the way. Is it not supposed to be for whether they uh, have an object they are attached to that they can move from place to place? Do you know what? I, I, JD, that's a great... You see, I'm not a huge believer in haunted objects because when you think of... Just think of yourself. The amount of objects you're going to come into contact with and the amount of things you're going to love. I know they say, oh, it's, it's something they'd love, but then why would it be a bloody great piece of furniture or a dining room table you know no one falls in love with it i can understand a little thing that you've been given to by your parents or your, your grandparents who passed down to the family but i can't believe that these would be um that these would be haunted and that's why i don't really believe in haunted objects and i, I it's like all these haunted object um museums i think they're a great idea and they're a lot of fun but i don't think the objects are haunted i, I can't believe why why would they be haunted I, why would I don't know, why would a table or a box or a... I, don't know, I, just, I just don't get it. I, I just don't see that they would be haunted. But that's just my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people making a lot of money out of these haunted... Um, uh, haunted objects, uh, haunted museum things. And, you know, good luck to them if that's what they want to do. But I, I wouldn't go on one. Um, Richard Woodmus, uh, Carl, what is your opinion of David Icke? Now... Do you know what? I feel extremely sorry for David Icke because obviously he's a very, in his day, uh, he was a very well-known presenter uh, with a lot of credibility and just because of his belief system. And, and I think Terry Wogan had a lot to do with it. He, he, he very wrongly um, ridiculed him on national television, which, and I'm a great fan of Terry Wogan, um, but he had no right to do. It was a, an appalling interview on Terry Wogan's behalf. Um, and I, and I know he tried to, to write it a few years later, but a lot of damage had been done. And a lot of these people don't realise is that um, David Icke had, you know, he had family, he had kids, he had people, you know, people around him that that loved him. And he had to go through this ridicule. And, it, and because in those days, you think there's only a few channels, so you millions of people were watching it. And television did something in those days. It wasn't like it is today, just full of a load of dross and people skipping from thing to thing. It It... Television was a, was a had a mouthpiece and people listened to it, and it was such a, a horrible thing for Terry Wogan to have done to David Icke. And yeah, you you shouldn't. You know, if if he were, had any other religion, if you know if he was was a, a Muslim or a Christian or a well, no Christians, everyone takes a Mickey out of Christians. But if he uh, was a Catholic or a Jew, and that had been done about their religion, there would have been hell to pay. But because that's something that David Icke believed in, and for some, it was weird, but who cares? You know, there's there's people out there who would think that, you know, a woman in uh, in the, the 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 Middle East got pregnant by 
a man she didn't see via an angel gave birth to someone who used to walk on water and died, came back three days later and is the son of God. Now, you kind of go, you know, I mean, we don't, and I'm not knocking any religion whatsoever. We, we have, everyone has their right to believe what they want. I have a belief. I mean, I, I don't tell people what the belief is because it's my personal belief. Um, but you have a right to believe that. And David Icke has a right to believe what he wants to believe. And you know, if, if somebody thinks it's nuts, that's fine. You, know, you can say it, but you, you should, as a certainly as an interviewer, you should sh show the man some respect. Um, and I would love to have interviewed David, uh, David Icke. I really wanted to when we had the channel, but he was, he was a little bit scared of it because he... Um, he... Um, he was probably nervous that that, that people were going to take the Mickey, and and it's sad because he he should be he should be heard. Why not? Um, you know, it, it just annoys me. If if this day and age we should be open to every single person speaking, and let's face it, if someone had come up a year ago and said we'll all be walking around in masks and scared to breathe on each other, and keeping two meters apart within a year, no one would have believed them. They'd have thought they were nuts, and yet you know here we are. Um, Carl, how did you feel when uh, the psychic mediums you employed made you feel like you couldn't uh, trust or believe in them um, and turned out not to be true? What, it's like everything, Victoria. The trouble is you, you're... Um, thanks, Deborah, by the way. Um, you, you trust people, and that's all you can do. Is, 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 when people are desperate for fame and, and their ego is huge, they tend to come out with a load of bollocks, and yeah, they will tell you anything. And the trouble is... You, you judge people um, by your own character. And, and I, I, if they tell me something, I would believe them, because why would they lie? And, uh, and it's only when you get closer to it and you get on, you think, hang on, something's not right. And then when you find out they are, it's a huge betrayal of trust, a huge betrayal of trust, because not only have you put them on a show that you love dearly and you've trusted them, you've put them on a national international platform, um, also, you've entrusted the trust of your viewers to watch them. And when they let you down, they've let every single one of those people down too. And that's, that's hard. It is hard. And that's one of the reasons I'm, I, I just, I have this thing about psychics, certainly uh, fake psychics, but psychics in general, I don't think there's one that's ever done any good. Um, that's active out there at the moment. I just don't think there is. You know, you, Standing there on a the stage saying, is there a John in the audience? Or does somebody know a John and 15 hands come up? You can easily do it. And I know people are saying, oh, well, a psychic told me that yeah, my mum would die on Tuesday. And she died on Tuesday. But she could have told 999 other people their mum would die on Tuesday. And their mums didn't. It's just that yours did. And you, know, you then think they're, they're, they're psychic. And from that, they can make a career. I just think it's very sad. Um, it's a sad way of them living to come... To you know, constantly con people. Sorry, I won't keep banging on about it. I just bringing uh, bringing Glenn on the show was uh, was a fantastic decision. I know it's been a few years, but uh, we're now getting um, we're getting a new a newer series here in the states. Well, that's great. Um, you get new Glenn. Glenn is is great. He's he's. Do you know what JD? What a great saying. They they just prey on the coincidence or prey on one coincidence. What a great. That is, they, they do, they prey on one coincidence. <laughs> oh, they prey on coincidence, not one coincidence. Yeah, they do, they prey on coincidence. It, it's a, they can do, and that's such a, such a shame. Um, all right, just keep, just keep going, please. This is from Sue Creed. Predicted no international travel till 2024. So plenty of saving up for the for UK, most wanted experience, keep going. No, we've got to have international. The, the tourists industry would die, wouldn't it? Wow, I hope, I hope, Sue, that that's it's before then. I really do. <laughs> this is Bradley. I'm 14 and I don't get spooked and I love the program. Oh, thanks, Bradley. 14. Do you know what? It's it's um, it's good. You know, we, we're getting younger people like you young uh, in, getting in, more interested in the paranormal at a younger age and I think it's great because the more you the earlier you start 
the more you can the more you can do and let's face it the one thing i keep trying to tell everyone on this on the paranormal community is you know we should all be together and the more we do and the more we share and the more we're respectful of each other without trying to be egotistical um the more we're going to find the more we're going to see and who knows we could, it doesn't care, care who catches the best evidence just imagine that someone should catch the best evidence and wouldn't that be great for us i don't care who is out there but catch absolute unequivocal proof that there is a the, um, a spirit world out there and we should be sharing it with each other the trouble is a lot of people they'll be doing stuff and they'll be i've had people with great footage but refuse to share it because they don't want people to shout them down how sad is that how, i'm getting higher how sad is that it's so sad when people do that it really really is i have no idea where that voice came from i'm back down again i'm back down that is the word from uh, Australia for international travel. Wow, Sue. Well, it looks like, well, it's going to be cool for us anyway. Thing is, we are going up now. We've got, we've got a few trips to LA planned, so I mean, you can kind of do that with the media anyway. You can get, you can get past a few little issues. Aaron, um, I'm 14 on the 18th of August. 18th of August. Do you know what? Elvis died on the 16th, my mum's birthday's on the 17th, and your birthday's on the 17th. It's a run. It's a run. It's a run. Still don't believe in a lot of it, but I still uh, have a video from one of the most haunted experience with me on a Ouija board not touching glass. Yeah. It's, but that's the point. I know, John, we, we got some business in LA, and... Um, uh, I know my poor, my, my poor son at the moment. He's he's engaged to a, an LA girl, and he can't get out there. But um, see, so we 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 are be, going to be going over there at some point. Um, when it's when it's right. Cool, when it's nice. I'm from Devon, <laughs> worldwide ghosts. I'm sixty-one on the eleventh of August. Eleven. See, August is a good month. It's a good month. It is, Jackie. It's a good month. Ruth, where Glenn is lost, just saying. No, Ruth, I'm getting jealous. <sighs> I'm getting jealous, Ruth. Hey, Worldwide Ghosts. I'm just getting jealous. I'm, this is my jealous face. It's my jealous. Layover in Colorado, pints on me. <laughs> hey, John. Do you know what, mate? If I ever get to Colorado, that pint is definitely going to be on you. And several, probably. Followed by something really fattening to eat. <laughs> I'm feeling ill the whole of the next day. God, it's been a while since I've done that. Darren Brown proved you can tell people things and not be talking to the dead. Yeah, you can. It's called misdirection. Uh, people have been doing it for hundreds and hundreds of years. Well, um, probably 100 years, uh, Robert. Please come say hi to us on the live stream at Accrington. Yeah. It's Victoria Scott. Most haunted catapulted some of the uh, uh, some of the early mediums to stardom. Uh, so to hear that they used you to uh, and make you feel feel used uh, makes me sad. Yeah, it it, it does. It's not a nice thing. Um, works for me from John. Yep, that beer. Oh, bless. <laughs> next most haunted um, in Northern Ireland has to be next to the bar, next to a bar. I'll give you the whole team tonight. You'll never forget. This is JD. JD, you're on it, my friend. You're on it. You're on it. Uh, Michelle Rose, my son is 16 on the 21st. He gets his GCSE results. Wow, the day before. There'll be a cake on both days. So what's, what, what happens, Michelle, with the, the GSE result, GS, GCSE results? Because he wouldn't have taken the exams, would he? Because of lockdown. How, how does that work? Well, how has it worked? Just 
interested in any news on any any news on anything any news Carl of anything news you can share um, not as far as I'm scoring I can't at the moment I think I think uh, yeah sorry Carl but I think Glenn has a little following I think Glenn has a very big following girls like our Glenn so, so do some of the guys Glenn has a nice big huge gay following as well as a female following Right now, this is a threat. I don't normally go for threats. I'm like the police. I won't take any threats whatsoever. Now, this is Annie Acorn. And from little Annie Acorns do big oak trees grow of threats. If you don't say hi to me tonight, I'm never going to watch Most Haunted again. Right, I want everyone on here to say Hello to Annie. Hello, Annie. I don't want to stop watching Most Haunted. We love you, Annie. Everyone here loves Annie. We all love Annie, don't we? Oh, this is Joe Marshall. I heard. Yes, yeah, everyone said hello to Annie. This is lovely. Joe Marshall, I heard the podcast number 49. Hilarious. 50 years out now. So if you get there, everyone say hello to Annie. There you go, Annie. <sighs> tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, crumbly Annie. I forgot about that. Gee, I can't have one of those bloody songs that I absolutely can't stand. I'm not a musical person anyway. I don't know. I like musical. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, I think, was the last musical I ever watched on TV. Right, well, it's getting on. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to say goodnight to everyone. What's the most memorable advert you watched as a kid? Um, probably, I would say, um, a Milky Bar commercials. I was in one when I was a kid. Not as the extra Milky Bar kid. I was one of the kids in the background. But Because um, I just remember them. I remember watching them. Yeah, it was, it was dressed up as a cowboy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, white's lemonade. Oh, white's lemonade. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Oh, white's. Oh, white's. I'm a trying to give it up, but it's one of the... Sorry, I don't know why I'm singing that. Anyway, no night, everyone. Thank you so much for tonight. I really do appreciate it. Um, and as I say, it's come up for half past. And uh, um, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Awesome Car, again. And all you guys, thank you so much. Um... Love you all. I really do love you all. Um, anyway, uh, peace out and see you again soon. See you next Thursday. Bye-bye. Or -bye. see you tomorrow night, actually. Don't forget uh, Facebook. Uh, and Jenny's got all of those details. But go on to the um, Most Haunted page, uh, Most Haunted Events page, Experience page. <laughs> it's getting late. And uh, all the information will be there. Uh, and see you tomorrow night. Join us. Love you loads. Bye-bye.